Um, good afternoon, um, my name is Robbie, uh, Robbie Clutton, I'm the director here at Pivotal Labs um, London. Um, first, the good news, um, when I've been practicing this talk it's gone very quickly, so I kind of managed to get you to lunch on time, I think, so we can kind of claw back a few minutes. Um, so, so now, now we get on. So, um, I wanted to kind of talk today about some of the, some of the principles behind a lot of the practices which, uh, which we follow here at Pivotal and which kind of a lot of companies are trying to promote. And really, kind of dig uh, dig under uh, dig under the surface a little bit to kind of look at kind of you know some of the whys of, of what we're doing and kind of take a take a little look at there. So um, while you're here today, um, if you if you kind of look around, you're looking at a project. So I can see a few customers here. Um, you know what what you might see if you're kind of looking around. Um, you might see people pairing. You might people you might see people doing test driven development um, or kind of doing user research. You might have seen a kind of big stand up today. You might be part of a retrospective. Um, but kind of really the the question is you know do do just doing all these things does does you know does that really make you agile does that really make you a company which is kind of trying to do these these uh, these things and and really improve the way that you're kind of going going about your your business and. The answer is maybe. So let's kind of take a look at take a look at some of those things. And you know what what I've what I've tried to do is what I've been thinking about really over the last few years is kind of looking at the practices like like pairing, like doing test driven development, and kind of trying to look at some of the um, the principles behind it and some of the values kind of under, underpin these things, and try and look for look for kind of a common set of kind of foundational principles. Um, so this is this is my kind of uh, this is my effort at trying to kind of have a unifying theory um, and uh, and have a few few kind of uh, guiding principles to to follow. So I think the first one, and I think the biggest, biggest one for me is kind of reducing, reducing the cost of change. I think if you look at a lot of the practices and processes, you know, most of them are really concentrated on really driving down the cost of change to, to zero. Um, you know, I, think, uh, I think this is kind of quite an, quite an easy one to kind of talk about, um, uh, quite a hard one to, to achieve. I think if we're looking, you know, if, if thinking about the way that people have been building software over the last 20, 30 kind of longer years, um, you know, tends to be an emphasis on uh, making changes early and the longer you leave change, the higher the cost because uh, you're making decisions that you can't kind of back out of. So this is really about making decisions where you don't have to back out of those things or making decisions kind of as, as, late, as, as late as possible, um, all, all in order to, to do some of that. So if we look at kind of in the office, what are some of those practices and processes which, which we follow that I think kind of really benefit kind of reducing the cost of change? So I think that the, the way that kind of people are doing pair programming and, and rotating, I think, is one of the, one of the real key, key aspects to reducing the cost of change. You know, you have two people working together. And I think there's, there's a kind of off-sited sort of master-apprentice scenario which kind of happens with pair programming. One person is the, the person who knows what they're doing and the other person is, is the learner. Um, my, for, for me, I'm kind of an engineer, engineering background. My kind of, my favorite experience doing pair programming was working with someone who had kind of equal level of experience that I had, had about sort of 10 years, 10 years experience each in, mo in different industries. And it was really about bringing the combination of those experiences and, and the approaches which we'd use to solve challenges um, independently, bringing those together to solve the challenge which we were facing uh, at that moment in time on, on that project. So kind of really kind of bringing that experience in and kind of using that to kind of cherry pick the best, pra the best patterns, the best approaches, the best libraries, um, and all with that view of kind of like, well, we need to make sure that you know, we, we have to leave the code base and, and the product in a place where we can make it easy to change tomorrow and next week and, and continuously on from that. Rotating is another key point. So, kind of just having a pair and sticking with your pair uh, over the course of a project, um, you know, is, means that you're not necessarily going to be learning from other people who you're working with. So, we kind of generally, you know, as a as a general guideline, kind of look to do a rotation once a day. So, every day you're pairing with a, with a new person. This means that you're kind of spreading the knowledge, you're spreading that experience, you're reducing the risk um, of uh, accumulating knowledge silos. Um, so you're kind of really being able to kind of spread that experience and knowledge throughout the code base and throughout the team. So again, kind of in that effort of reducing the cost of change by kind of equally all putting things into the code base, which would, which would make it easy. More kind of technical processes um, kind of come in with test-driven development and kind of how I like to think about it is test-driven design. So kind of if you're writing, if you're writing tests before you write your code, um, and you then you continuously run your test while you're kind of uh, you, while you're changing your code. You know when you're finished when your tests run. 
So kind of once you get to that, once you see that green on the screen, then you kind of know that you're finished. You can make a choice to, to do what we call a refactor, so kind of in making improvements to your code, kind of make it cleaner, more maintainable. But kind of what you're doing is you're using these tests as a, as a mechanism for design. Maybe you're creating an interface. You're saying, if I'm building a calculator, and I have an add function, and I give it a 1 and a 1, and I expect a 2, I can kind of start to define that design, start to define that interface. And I know when I'm done, when I'm getting the right responses back. So again, kind of leaving these things in, and then having something like continuous integration, where every time you make a code change, that triggers a process which runs all of the historical tests to make sure that your code is always in a releasable state, it's always in a high quality state means that kind of you can make changes more confidently. And again, if you kind of get a left field requirement and you kind of need to make a, um, a drastic change to the system, you write your tests and, and you run them and your test passes and all of the rest of your, te your test pass, you can confidently make that change and commit that and push that into production because um, of the, the confidence that you have in the code and that it, that it is easy to change. Um, some of the kind of the, the less technical, more kind of uh, product oriented aspects here, sort of adopting sort of user user centered design, kind of lean product management. Right? So it's not necessarily about building building the thing well, but it's about building the right thing as well. So I've one of my kind of first engagements um, when I was working at BT, when I had a big team building something, um, uh, you know, which we consider to be a, a beautiful application, uh, which no one used. Um, so it was kind of completely, it was completely useless, it was a massive waste of time, but it was a lot of fun and I learned a lot. Um, so kind of without kind of that validation of kind of building the right thing, um, you know, we're just wasting effort, we're wasting time and we're wasting kind of our, uh, the company's ability to kind of release value to the users. So, you know, what do we want to do here? We want to kind of get concepts and ideas out to the users early, we want to test them with the users, we want to make sure that it's resonating with them, that it's kind of addressing the challenges, it's addressing the needs that they, that they have. We want to make kind of low fidelity changes, whether that's kind of, you know, pen and, pen and pencil on a piece of paper, whether that's a prototype, whether that's early versions of an application, kind of get that in front of users, in, learn about that feedback, you know, do that across multiple people, incorporate some of this feedback into the product, make those changes and kind of get them out again. So again, all these processes are around, around doing just that, reducing the cost of change, kind of learning, learning more and making sure that we're incorporating those things in um, and uh, going through there. So uh, the second one is kind of shortening the, shortening the feedback cycle. So you'll see kind of a, a, number, of, uh, a number of things kind of uh, um, coming back in here. And I, I was making changes about five minutes beforehand, but they haven't manifested here. But again, kind of, um, you know, kind of reducing the, the feedback cycle. So the, the smallest feedback cycle that we have is a test. If we write a test and we run it and it fails, and then we can um, make a code change and run that test again, and then it passes, you know, we can do that in a matter of uh, uh, minutes and we can kind of get that feedback and we can kind of we can do that hundreds of times a day to accumulate those feedbacks. We can do that through pairing, we can do that through rotation, and we can do that with kind of full stack development. So if people are delivering a story from top to bottom and they can deliver something which is a unit of value which can be tested and, and quantified with the user, and then we can gather feedback and bring that in, you know, then we're doing, the, we're doing the right thing. If we're only kind of taking a, a story and we're only delivering up kind of halfway and we're not kind of delivering any further, we've only delivered a partial value or we might not be able to deliver all of that value until we've done, um, until we've done kind of a user-facing story as well. And so a lot of these practices and processes around kind of re reducing the, uh, the feedback cycle. Um, other things we kind of have in the office as well, kind of stand-ups, we have office stand-ups where we kind of get everyone together and this is not your what did you do yesterday, what you did today, um, kind of what your blockers. These are, you know, who's in the office, who's, who's new in the office, what helps the people have interest things. It's all about kind of being open and collaborative and kind of sharing, asking for help. Um, you know, we have lots of regular communications, whether that's uh, planning sessions, um, whether that's kind of, uh, we have you know, a number of teams solving many different problems here, kind of going over and saying like, oh, I know that this person is, is sol has solved something quite similar recently. I can kind of go and bring them in and kind of bring, bring them over. Again, kind of having that kind of high touch, uh, uh, high touch kind of communication. There's also a number of kind of collaborative techniques which we have. So in this, in this picture, you know, we have some designs, there are lots of kind of dots on the, on the table. You know, we're kind of trying to take something, put something up on the whiteboard and kind of dot vote on what we think is going to be most successful. We also want to be kind of, again, doing conducting user research, speaking with our users, making sure that we're building the right thing. So again, kind of reducing, reducing the feedback cycle, increasing the frequency of feedback and the fidelity of feedback, but also kind of reducing that feedback cycle. So we're kind of getting feedback as, as close to real time as possible. Again, whether that's in a code, whether that's in the product, in the design, you know, each one of these layers, and even 
the sort of the, the strategy of, of the, the product which we're building. You know, we kind of want to increase the frequency and re reduce the uh, reduce the time it takes to get that and increase the frequency and the fidelity. Third is kind of like seeking continuous improvement. I think this is kind of, uh, along with kind of reducing the cost of change, this is kind of one of the big ones that kind of I'd like to kind of leave with you. Um, you know, if, you're, if you put processes and practices and, and ultimately kind of develop a culture in your organization which strives to be better every day, and I, you know, I want to be better tomorrow than I am today, and I want to be better next week than I am this week, you know, I think you're, you will kind of eventually go to a place which kind of will, you'll be in a very productive and, and hopefully uh, con constructive place. Um, so so what, do we do, what do we do around here? So we have a lot of retrospectives. So generally, end of a week or every two weeks, we'll get the whole team together. We'll talk about what's gone well, what hasn't gone well, what improvements. We want to take actions out of that. We want to take measurable actions, follow them through the next week. You know, how are we doing on these actions? Is it still relevant? Do we do this? Did it have the improvement that we, that we wanted it to have? So again, kind of making it actionable um, and pulling through. We also kind of really big, big on kind of peer feedback. And one of my favorite expressions of that is this kind of plus delta. So kind of generally at the end of the day, you kind of say, hey, what did we do well today? What was good? And what would we want to change? So incorporating that into your pair who are working together and trying to encourage them to just, you know, every day, hey, what was good? What can we change for tomorrow? Again, kind of these like micro practices kind of I think will lead, lead you to hopefully a, a, better, uh, a better place. Also big, um, big in favor of transparency. So there's kind of, we don't like information hiding. We kind of want information to be, to be free within the, within the team. We kind of use certain tools and we have certain practices around that. So again, kind of this continuous improvement, we want things to surface early. We want the team to be aware so that they can kind of make conscious decisions about, um, about what they're doing, whether they need to make a change, whether they need to cut, cut scope, add scope, um, and, uh, or whatever those kind of decisions, decisions are. So again, it's kind of making information, making relevant information available to the team so they can make decisions. Kind of um, lastly, so this is the, the fourth one. So for me, you know, it's, it's really, it's kind of, it's all, about, it's all about the people, right? So even though we're writing software, we're writing kind of ones and zeros and running them on in the cloud, you know, it's really what we're trying to emphasize is this relationship between a group of people who are trying to figure out what to build and build it in a high, high quality way, um, which is going to address a market need, which is going to release value for, for customers and, and uh, stakeholders. So it's really about trying to create an environment for, for people to kind of work in, in a very productive way. So some of the things which we do here, a you know, big emphasis on, on community. You know, so we have the, the big company stand up. Um, we let people use this space uh, here for, for events. So we have a number of kind of free co coding, um, coding camps. So kind of code bar and um, co-ed code. So we like to kind of create that um, collaborative environment here outside of our environment um, as well as for ourselves. Um, you know, we want to have balanced and collaborative teams. So kind of again, when you're walking around the office, we don't have developers in one corner and designers in another. We have teams of people who are working on a singular product and they're going to have designers and developers and data scientists and product managers and the business kind of all sitting around a table or all, all kind of collaborating on, uh, on the same product and kind of going, going through and kind of aiming to, aiming to build, um, build those aspects. And kind of finally, you know, we, the, the way which we work is kind of very structured discipline. It can be quite a high uh, level of intensity. Um, so we kind of like to make sure we create an environment sort of here. Um, normally you'd see some ping pong tables here and, and uh, you know, people come in and say, oh, you know, you think you're a startup, so you have your ping pong tables. Um, but really there's a, there's, a, there's, a reason, there's a reason for that. Um, you know, because of this uh, high collaboration, kind of mental intensity, kind of um, way of way of working, like having something where there's a physical break, a physical separation from your working area, um, can really kind of help you get out, exercise a different part of the brain, um, exercise your your body a little bit. You know, grab a cup of tea and kind of get back to the desk. Hopefully, hopefully feeling uh, feeling refreshed. And of course, doing those kind of extra uh, extracurricular activities, be them kind of over lunch or after work, uh, to kind of bring bring the team together as well. So really, um, that's kind of in a, in a nutshell kind of what, what I wanted to talk about. So those are the four, um, those kind of four topics. So kind of reducing the cost of change, um, reducing, the, uh, 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 reducing the, the feedback cycle, um, uh, that, you know, it's all about the people. And the third one, I always forget the third one. 
um, so those are all those are e equally important, honestly. Um, but the, these are kind of the things which I think, if you, if you look at the practices, if you look at kind of what you're doing and you challenge yourself around, like, well, why are we actually doing this? I don't want to. I don't want to just do it because someone else is doing it. Don't don't even do it just because Pivotal is doing it. Do it because do these practices because you think that they're going to improve you. Challenge yourselves um, and continuously kind of ask yourselves whether it's working. Kind of make tweaks and changes and kind of uh, learn from yourselves and, and others. And kind of really, a lot of these things are around the the, the cultural changes that uh, need to take place in an organisation to kind of get, you know, really reap the benefit of of these practices and, and approaches. Um, but I do think that kind of un under the hood, these are the kind of the, the core kind of principles which underlie a lot of these practices. So uh, that's why I wanted to share with you today. Uh, thank you very much. <coughs>